Tim Breinfels, Senior Software Developer at NL Net Labs, who will be making a presentation on delegated RPKI and Krill. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm standing between you and the social event, I realize. But uh, I'll do my best to keep it interesting. Um, you're putting up the slides? Do I? Sorry. Better. Um, I think they're preparing my slides. No? Okay, right, here we go. Thank you. Um, so, um, I was going to talk about um, delegated uh, RPKI ICAs. Um, question, should you run your own? Well, if you're a NICBR member, then yes. If not for something else, uh, because, well, you have to. There's no other way. If you're a LACNIC member, then maybe. My LACNIC is there, or my LACNIC is there, and um, I think it's a perfectly good solution for most of you. But if you'll bear with me, then I'll uh, dive in into delegated RPKI a bit and tell you about why it also might be useful. So before we go there, um, a quick overview of the open source software out there. Um, there's uh, Krill by Analnet Labs, which I write. It's very widely used. Um, RPKID by Dragon Research Labs. They have the cooler name, I'll give them that. Um, that's actually also perfectly good software, but it's unfortunately not being maintained recently. Um, the RIPE MCC has, an open, has open source their RPKI core code, but it's really for transparency. It's not software you can easily run. Um, so, <clears throat> what I want to say with this is not so much that, you know, I make Krill and it's the best and you should only use that. Actually, I think the ecosystem needs more options. But, well, in the meantime, I think we provide one. So, why would you 
actually do all this? Um, there are some reasons um, that may apply to you. Um, one of the reasons can be that if you run your own system, you can, con can control access to that system in different ways. So you can give access to different people, maybe, maybe people that don't normally have access to uh, your uh, RAR portal. Um, you can have your local logs and other trails. You can plan when you uh, bring your system down. Um, perhaps more importantly, you can sub-delegate resources. So you can make additional CAs and you can carve up your resources in, in ways that allow you to give people access to certain things, but not other things. Um, more importantly, for uh, big organizations who receive resources on their uh, various RERs, uh, using a delegated system can help you because it would allow you to use essentially one system instead of, let's say, five um, that you have to interact with. So you can automate things uh, in one way and then uh, be done with it. Why not? Well, it's another thing to run. So if you don't need all this, then, well, don't do it. I've, I've spoiled the conclusion, conclusions already, but, uh, well. <laughs> Why not? Well, <clears throat> there is this thing. Um, your RPKI CA makes all these objects, but they also need to live somewhere. They need to be published so that they can be downloaded and, and, and validated. And um, so there are certain NA, uh, NARs like NICBR and uh, RARs like uh, uh, Aaron, APNIC, RIPNCC who offer a publication server to the, uh, service to their members. So you can just run your own uh, CA. It doesn't need to be accessible uh, you know, by the outside world. And it will publish its resources in those repositories. And it really reduces the operational burden. Because you know, if your system would be unavailable for some time, then it's still OK as long as you bring it back up before uh, let's say your, your manifest would expire. So the manifest has a, well, in case you have hours to fix things. Um, but, um, yeah, and this is actually how that would work. So here, um, what I've shown here on this slide is the model that is essentially applicable to uh, NICBR members. Um, LACNIC delegates a certificate to NICBR. There's now around 2,300 uh, NICBR members running their own uh, CA instance, usually Krill. They uh, publish the content at NICBR and then this is validated. Um, <clears throat> the, I wanted to briefly show uh, the user interface here shown in uh, Spanish. Uh, it supports different languages. Um, so it offers similar functionality to what the RAR systems uh, offer. So you can create your ROAS, you can see um, how they relate to BGP, and as far as Krill can know that, it uses uh, um, the information from uh, RIPE RIS uh, root collectors for this. It can do uh, some kind of analysis and suggestions about things that you may want to do differently, but it's ultimately always up to you, of course. Um, then, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is just showing um, how our parent, in our case, on LNET Labs, is configured. So this is right NCC, we're a member of them. Now, if you want to publish yourself, then all of this becomes a bit more complicated because um, the content, well, that pretty much needs to be available um, to everybody all the time. And there are some tricks that you need to do because well, you can run your publication server and your content and put it all on one node and then things are simple, but then when that node is down, then you have issues. And if you use multiple nodes, well, then you get problems with data that might be different on one node to the other. Um, I'll spare you the details because there's really not enough time for that. Um, we did build something that helps. We called it, well, we gave it a very imaginative name, Krill Sync. <laughs> um, this is something you can use to uh, ensure that the data is uh, gathered from a central repository um, and set up in a consistent way. 
you can then have load balancers, like a sticky load balancer for uh, HDS uh, access, a normal load balancer for rsync, which you'll also need, and then RPTI validators can use that. It is not impossible to do, but it's definitely a lot more work than publishing at your RER. Conclusions. Um, well, like I said, if the hosted model, if Milaknik does everything you need, then by all means, use that. I think the experience uh, from uh, the deployment in Brazil has shown that if publishing parent is an option, then running your own CA is actually quite manageable. So my question to Lechnik would be, please provide a publication service as well, because then people will have this option. In the meantime, yeah, you can do your own. Um, and if you want to know more about how all this publication works and what you can do to make the set it up in a reliable way, then I'm around and uh, we can talk. So that's actually it. Thank you. We are about to finish. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. And before we leave, we invite you to the social event at uh, the Domingo Beach Club Dressing Code Casual. We're going to be by the beach. Please take your badges. The buses will leave at 7 p.m. at the door, and we are